All right, Game Boy Pocket slash Buy Boy Pocket is complete. Using all the original controls, uh, just a quick overview. We have the original on-off switch, uh, a USB port, the original volume, real volume, original controls, original headphone jack, and the original power jack. Um, the headphone jack when connected to the stereo. When it's not connected, it pumps mono to the speaker. Uh, we have the original contrast control, which controls the brightness on the screen. And uh, that's pretty much everything here. Um, the battery compartment is sealed. Uh, you have a you have a fake cartridge in there to cover up the Raspberry Pi, the access the SD card. Um, two and a half inch uh, Adafruit composite LCD. Um, doesn't quite fill up the height, so there's a little bit of a a black filler in there and uh, 3600 milliamp hour battery inside uh, Raspberry Pi A plus and uh, a, a, a2 plus whatever it is and uh, flip it on uh, a little nuance with the switch is the controller for the battery is a push button and it's a slide switch so it's just a quick on off Get the original power LED in there uh, removed all the uh, trying to bring this up here. Removed all the uh, uh, instructions that come up during boot, so it looks like a little bit of a cleaner boot. Custom splash screen, of course, that might be something better than that. It's just something quick. We're running RetroPie 3.1. Yeah, I see it boots pretty quick. We have uh, probably the emulators, Atari 2600, 5200, 7800, uh, Atari Lynx, uh, Neo Geo, Game Gear, Game Boy, obviously, uh, Game Boy Advance, uh, which uh, still have a couple of issues with, uh, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, NES, uh, Neo Geo Pocket, Turbo Graphics 16, uh, ports, which is like uh, Quake and Doom and whatnot, or see the option settings, Sega 32X. Um, the Sega SG-1000, the Super Nintendo, and the Vectrix. So, plenty of options. And, uh, go into the links here. Let's skip down. Go to the gates of Endicon. Anyhow, that works just fine. Go back out here. Uh, Neo Geo, just you would think they're one of the hardest to emulate, but it works just fine too. Uh, Paul Star. It's so running the uh, FBA emulator. Uh, of course, classic Game Boy. Oh, quite loud.
Yeah, I'll show a couple more. Uh, be a Genesis game on there. I'll just skip down here. I don't know. What's a good one? With Joe and Mac. go uh finally some tour graphics some blazing lasers classic shoot 'em up There you go. Never mind the bad jump cut. My phone decided to stop recording. And, uh, so I'll pick up where I left off. Uh, I was getting to the point where I said to shut down the system. Quit. Shut. Shut down. And, uh, you'll see all the, the screen turn off. And then you just slide it over and on until it turns off. And slide it back. And, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm not against maybe building a few one-off versions of it. Um, uh, but do realize it would not be cheap. It would come at a price because the components themselves inside and the resin or the Game Boy Pocket add up to a hundred dollars, you know, 50 bucks for the screen, 20 bucks for the Raspberry Pi, 15, 20 bucks for a busted Game Boy Pocket, uh, even the screen cover, battery controller, so... You know, you're looking at at least 100 to 150 dollars just for all the parts, depending on things and uh, current prices. So, but if it's something somebody really wanted or was really interested in, uh, contact me and just send me a message. And otherwise, uh, if you like it, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, I'm going to try and do some more videos of more of the uh, retro kind of stuff, maybe mods to other systems. And, uh, general electronic stuff and uh, if you like the video give me a thumbs up thanks